Welcome to the Gatekeeper instructional video for Metro Ski League. This video and the information in it has been prepared for all parents who possibly could be gatekeepers on the course during the season. The video covers everything you need to know about gatekeeping from A to Z and assumes no prior knowledge of, of ski racing. Seg some segments during the video are in slalom version and giant slalom version where the two types of, uh, of ski racing that we do come into play with respect to gate judging so you, you'll notice that. In addition to the video on the Metro League website you'll also find written material that's posted. There's a lengthy gatekeeper instruction write-up that's pretty much uh, a text version of what you'll see in the video. Uh, there's also a rule book posted for the Metro Ski League. So thanks in advance for watching this video and volunteering to be a gatekeeper at uh, your kids high school race. It's without a doubt, w without the volunteer support that we get, the uh, high school ski racing would not be possible. So thanks again. What we'll be talking about in this section is defining the course and what a gate is and what gate passage is. This is a model of one gate for a giant slalom or a GS course. It's made up of a set of two paired poles with panels on them so you can see them at high speed. The course is defined as sets of these gates alternating red, blue, red, blue down the hill from the start to the finish. And the start and finish are not defined as gates. They have their own rules and we'll just be talking about gates and the rules that pertain to, to that. If this is the uphill direction and the downhill direction, a gate that's oriented like this will be called open. You may find ones on the course that are oriented like that, that's closed, and ones that are in between and they're oblique. You'll notice that the inner poles of these sets form an imaginary line in the snow. This is called the gate line. As a gate judge out on the course, you'll be assigned a section of the course and it'll be your responsibility to watch several gates and your basic job will be to judge each racer going down the hill and decide whether or not they've gone through the gates correctly. The rules for going through the gates are really simple. A basic correct gate passage involves nothing more than crossing this imaginary gate line in the snow for every single gate with both tips and both boots with skis mounted. So here's an example of a correct gate passage. Here's an example of a missed gate. Direction through the gate doesn't, doesn't matter. So this would be a correct gate passage. Another thing that doesn't matter is the order that you go through the gates. Style doesn't count. This is a correct gate passage. Hopefully you won't see that. But it's correct because the ski tips and both boots went, through, went across the gate. In this case, you can consider the line as a plane extending up high. If a racer crashed through the gate, that would be a correct gate passage, provided that both tips and both boots cross the line with mounted skis. There's another way to miss, miss a gate besides just going around the outside of it and that would be if one ski tip went to the inside of one of the inner defining poles and one went to the outside, a miss like that's called a straddle and that's, I point that out only because it's useful in differentiating what kind of a, a gate miss that you might have. If a racer misses a gate, here's an example of that, if the racer realizes it, if they are able to stop in time, they can hike back up and go back across the gate line. As soon as both tips and both boots cross the line, that's a legal passage. So this is an example of where the direction doesn't matter going through a gate, because in this case they went through 
in what would be considered a backwards, backwards direction. It's still legal. Another case illustrating we're going through the gates not in order, doesn't matter. If a racer missed this gate and went down through the red one, which I don't have a model of, and they went legally through that, and they realized that they missed the blue gate up above, they could stop, hike back up through the blue gate, cross the line with both tips and both boots. That gate's now passed, and if they chose to, they could then ski on down and not go through the red gate that they've already correctly passed. That would be their choice. That's to illustrate that the order that you go through the gates does not matter. In many ski racing organizations, if you lose your skis, you're out. You're out of the race, your day is done. In high school ski racing in Oregon, you're allowed to lose skis and not be disqualified with some limits. Specifically, you can lose your ski, one ski, one time only, and if you're able to get the ski back on and continue racing down the course, then that's, that's a, a possible way for you to finish. For example, in this case the racer comes down, loses a ski due to a hard edge or just a premature binding release. The rules allow the racer to continue motion through one gate only as long as the ski tip and both boots cross the gate line. That's con considered a, a correct passage. The rule is written this way to take some of the pressure off the gatekeeper in terms of judging because now you don't have to be concerned about where the ski falls off with respect to crossing, crossing the gate. So in this case if the racer ends up down at the bottom of the gate and the other, other ski happens, the lost ski happens to end up down below the gate as well, the racer could just put the ski back on and continue going through all the rest of the gates with both tips and both both boots and they've had one ski loss count towards their run. If they lose a ski a second time then they're done. Likewise if the racer was, was skiing down the course approaching the gate or, or anywhere along the course if they lose both skis since that's more than losing one ski one time, they're done. All of the racers are supposed to, to know this rule, and if they exceed the binding release limits, they're supposed to stop and clear the course immediately and get out of the way for a racer that may be coming down behind them. Now there is one other wrinkle to losing skis on the course while you're racing, and that's at the last gate. Pretend that this is the last gate. The rule book says, on the last gate, if you've lost a ski and it's not due to or not caused by a gate fault such as straddling, which by the way also applies to any other loss of ski elsewhere on the course, you're allowed to go through the last gate with one tip and, and both boots on the remaining mounted ski, and that's a legal passage as well. This is okay even if you've lost a ski somewhere else higher up above the course in the region above the second to the last gate. So you can consider it one extra ski loss allowed by the rules. So in theory you could, you could lose your skis twice on, one ski twice on the course and not be disqualified provided that the last time you lost a ski it was, it was at the last gate. The important thing to remember, remember there judging wise is that when the ski is, ski is lost, again, it can't be caused by a, by a fault such as straddling. The, the, one, the one ski allowance isn't meant to excuse straddling. 